Good evening, you're watching News Mongolian Beyond. I'm your host, Tanar Khabatar. And for top stories, the 5050 Women Can Do conference was held on November 4th. In 2022, a total of 54 billion MIT soft loans will be provided to small and medium businesses. Students of regional schools pitch their business ideas. And for the news, stay tuned. The 50-50 Women Can Do conference was organized on November 4th by the Hun Party to promote women's participation in leadership and improve their legal environment. At the conference, successful women representatives from political parties and from the business community participated. The chairman of the Hun Party, Dorch Handa, opened the forum. In his speech, he said that there is an important need for women's participation and that he will support women by seeing more female participants at the decision-making level. Well, today Hun Party is announcing a new policy, and the policy is called the 50-50 Hun. And as you know, that the Mongolian population is 3.5 million, but among the people, the females are more than men. It's like more than 51 percent. But in terms of this uh, political scheme, the women participation is very low, especially at the level of decision making. It's less than 20 percent. And that's why uh, we believe that uh, the women participation brings a good result to the society. Also, women who were leaders from various professions participated in this forum and shared their stories about how they got into politics. We all know in Mongolia today at the decision-making level, there are very few women who are actually participating in policy formulation process. So together with this uh, UNDP project, which is trying to support women participation in Mongolia, uh, lately we have organized quite many events, for example, training uh, women uh, leaders and also uh, not only women, also male young people to be educated in terms of politics and politics related uh, legislations and also gender sensitive issues and as well as why young people and youth should, should participate in politics and why they should support uh, newcomers in uh, uh, politics. The main theme of the forum was the announcement of the 50-50 policy and a discussion was held on how to increase the participation of women entrepreneurs as well as doctors and teachers in politics. Because nowadays we know that even though 51% of population is women, our you know, representatives of women at the different level of decision making is not enough. So we should involved with this uh, whole processes and should uh, raise our voices. The women participating in the forum expressed satisfaction that they felt inspired by other women to increase their political engagement and speak on behalf of all women in Mongolia. And uh, we've been in encouraging the women and training them and inviting them that, OK, please welcome and let's do it together and let's have a more balanced approach. The meaning is that uh, not only the support and the male participation as well as at the same time the women participation is quite important. And as you know that this ratio in the uh, world is uh, very high, it's getting high, but in, Mongolia, in the case of Mongolia it's very low. Even we are lower than in the, the average of uh, the Asian society, Asian politics. When we talk about gender, it is often primarily seen as a women's issue who want to lead. In fact, a good solution can be achieved by changing the understanding of people working at management level in terms of how decisions affect both women and men equally, and how it provides equal opportunities in their lives and activities. So people working at management level should change their perception. This year, 54 billion MIT of soft loans will be provided to small and medium businesses. It was regulated that the selection process will have three to four steps, and the final decision will reflect professional associations' proposal and ideas. There are around 600 small and medium businesses operating in Mongolia today. Dornut Province's Nyingi Dairy Company has launched its factory with the capacity of processing around two tons of milk daily in 2021. 
Currently, the factory is producing 10 varieties of dairy products. The factory administration says that a 70 million Mongolian Tugruk soft loan was taken from the SME Development Fund. We are currently getting acquainted with the small and medium businesses and their factories on site in order to limit companies that just exist on paper only of getting SME soft loans. This year, 20.5 billion Mongolian Tugruks of soft loans will be provided from the SME Development Fund with 3% interest annually. The principal loan repayment is waived for the first 12 months. The small and medium projects shall apply electronically. First, we will check the documents and completeness. Then, we will check the plant and the factory on site, as well as their technology. In other words, the selection process is becoming more transparent. There is International Fund for Agricultural Development, so we are submitting some proposals to support the cooperatives. If the proposal is supported, there is a possibility of providing more than 4 billion MNT to cooperatives. Over the past period, 867 small and medium businesses submitted their applications for soft loans towards projects with a value of 105 billion Mongolian Tugruks. 571 businesses submitted their request valued at 82.5 billion Mongolian Tugruks electronically. High school students of Zahon province elaborated on their project aimed at improving living environment in the region. We have details from our correspondent in Zahon province. Save the Children has been implementing development projects targeted to teenagers and youth since 2020. As part of the project, many activities dedicated to self-development and improving entrepreneurship skills of young people that will further help their career were implemented in Titmansum of Tzavkhan province. Reporting on what they have learned during the past activities, students of the high school of Titmansum introduced their micro-projects during the event. 52.5% of adult school staff, including our teachers, and 36.2% of students are overweight. As students of the health club, we have come up with a fitness club business idea, charging a 40,000 Mongolian Tugruks monthly subscription or a tariff of 2,000 Mongolian Tugruks per hour. The dorm will set aside an area of around 30 square meters. The first time I participated in the pitch of a project on the library, but I failed because I had no proper business plan. After that, I tried again with my Magic Bubble Soap production project, but it was declined due to safety issues. This time, I hope my business plan will be selected and I'm confident that my project will get the go-ahead. Our team is promoting a plan to reduce children's addiction to social media and smart electronic devices. We have surveyed about 200 students and more than half responded that they are interested in archery, but they don't have necessary tools and equipment. Our project is projected to cost 2.8 million MNT and we will rent out bows and arrows to interested students. I learned Mongolian script and calligraphy from an inner Mongolian teacher and decided to launch a project that teaches the Mongolian script and calligraphy. In total, 40 people can enroll in one intake, including students and public servants. Students later will be able to sell their calligraphy works. We live in the dorms. As it's not allowed to leave the dorm after 6 p.m., we have a project on creating a shared working space. As we have no specific dedicated space, many children spend their time just by playing on their phone and so on. The dorm administration has agreed to provide us with an area of 50 square meters. The project is projected to cost 2.6 million Mongolian Tugruks as we need to purchase literature and books for all age groups. We can create user cards by which students can borrow the books. We will evaluate all the projects by using specific criteria. If the projects meet the selection criteria, they can all receive the funding, and there is no limit to the number of recipients. They will sign a six-month-long contract to receive the 
1.8 million Mongolian Tigris fund with us. This project allows students to learn about entrepreneurship, mentorship, and in general about how to conduct a business. This event not only develops students but teachers as well. Thanks to this project, students can learn about time management, teamwork, responsibility, and accountability. The provinces have launched a pitch for an entrepreneurship competition among schools to the value of 90 million Mongolian Tugriks. Our school students are also pitching their business ideas representing Tafkom province. 15-16 year old teens learn about how to create a project, including a business plan, market research, as well as marketing and budget planning. I'm sure this knowledge will benefit their future career. In total, 10 teams from the Telmansom Secondary School introduced their business plans during this event. This project is currently being implemented in 25 SOMS of five provinces. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Here's the international news from our partner agencies. Seven ships carrying 290,000 tons of agricultural products set sail from Ukrainian seaports on Thursday, heading to Asia and Europe, according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Infrastructure. The ministry released footage of inspections being carried out and of the key night cargo ship departing a Ukrainian port. The vessel was loaded with 67,000 tons of corn headed for China, according to the ministry. The ships that set sail Thursday included one carrying 29,000 tons of sunflower seeds bound for Oman, according to the Minister of Infrastructure. The departure of the ships came a day after Russia agreed to a rejoin, a wartime agreement allowing Ukrainian grain and other commodities to be shipped to world markets. In announcing Russia was rejoining the pact, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Moscow had received assurances that Ukraine wouldn't use the humanitarian corridors to attack Russian forces. He warned that Russia reserves the right to withdraw again if Kyiv breaks its word. Russia had suspended its participation in the grain deal over the weekend, citing an alleged drone attack against its Black Sea fleet in Crimea. Ukraine didn't claim responsibility for an attack, and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said Wednesday that Moscow's return to the agreement showed Russian blackmail did not lead to anything. Since the deal was reached, 430 ships have exported 10 million tons of Ukrainian agricultural products to countries in Africa, Asia and Europe. The Infrastructure Ministry said that export volumes in October could have been 30 to 40 percent higher if Russia had not artificially blocked inspections in the Bosphorus. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz met with the leaders of six Balkan nations on Thursday in Berlin to sign agreements on easing regional travel arrangements and mutual recognition of academic qualifications. The European Union's top officials joined leaders from Serbia, Kosovo, Bosnia, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Albania for a meeting where they also discussed energy issues. Scholz highlighted the need to deliver on the country's long-standing desire to join the European Union, which he said is in their interest. But with tension brewing again between Serbia and Kosovo this week, he said that the nations themselves need to overcome problems that have slowed their path to the European Union and pointed to a sense of urgency. Germany and others have been pushing Serbia in particular to tighten its central policies as an increasing number of migrants have tried to reach wealthier Western European countries via the Balkans in recent months. Now let's take a look at our regular future sports. 
FIFA has written to all 32 teams competing at the World Cup to tell them the time has come to focus on the football. The tournament, which starts on Qatar on November 20th, has been surrounded by controversy. Qatar has been criticized for its stance on same-sex relationships, its human rights record and its treatment of migrant workers. Peaceful protests have been planned by some players. England's Harry Kane and nine other captains of European teams will be wearing One Love armbands. Denmark will wear toned-down shirts for the World Cup to protest against Qatar. Their kit provider, Hummel, said it does not wish to be visible in a tournament it claims has cost thousands of lives. Paris and other French cities are refusing to screen World Cup matches in public areas, despite France being the defending champions. Australia's squad has released a video urging Qatar to abolish its law on same-sex relationships. Speaking this week, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp said it was not fair to expect players to make political statements or protest at the tournament. And England's Bath Mead said on Thursday it is disappointing the tournament is being held in Qatar. Mead, who is openly gay, does not think the Gulf state is the right place for the tournament to be staged. Other of the failed issues include Russia currently being banned by FIFA after the invasion of Ukraine. In addition, the Ukrainian Football Association have called for Iran to be banned from the World Cup for systematic human rights violations. They believe a crackdown on protests in the country may violate the principles and norms of FIFA. The World Cup has been moved to the winter for the first time. Qatar initially proposed to host the finals during the summer in air-conditioned and closed stadiums, but the plan was rejected. Qatar World Cup organizers state everyone is welcome to visit the country, to watch the football and that no one will be discriminated against. Now the game's world governing body has now written to all competing nations. In addition to calling on countries to now focus on the football, the latter, signed by FIFA President Gianni Infantino and Secretary General Fatma Samora says, Everyone is welcome regardless of origin, background, religion, gender, sexual orientation or nationality. Seven new stadiums have been built for the event, as well as an airport, roads and about 100 hotels. Qatar's government says 30,000 foreign laborers have been hired just to build the stadiums, with most coming from Bangladesh, India, Nepal and the Philippines. The Brooklyn Nets are suspending Harry Irving for at least five games without pay, saying they were dismayed by the failure to end equivocally say he has no anti-Semitic beliefs. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver says he'll meet with Kyrie Irving next week about his social media activity. The Brooklyn Nets guard 30 was criticized after sharing a link about a film featuring anti-Semitic material. In response, Irving and the Nets released a joint statement on Wednesday that pledged to donate 1 million US dollars to combat hate and intolerance. Silver said he was disappointed at that although Irving said he meant no harm with the post, he did not apologize. I take my responsibility for posting that. Some things that were questionable in there, untrue. Like I said, in the first time you guys asked me when I was sitting on that stage, I don't believe everything that everybody posts. It's a documentary. So I take my responsibility. Hours after Irving refused to issue the apology that NBA Commissioner Adam Silva sought for posting a link to an anti-Semitic work on his Twitter feed, the Nets said that Irving is currently unfit to be associated with the Brooklyn Nets. Here's the weather forecast of all major cities. Well, that's all for this week and thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next week with more news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.